welcome back. So let's talk about the second category of the 10 essentials. So remember, we started with the body shape, head lifting up, shoulders down, chest sinking in, and waist relaxed. Next, we're gonna talk about coordinating the motions. And there's three things that relate to coordinating the movement within our body. The first one is separate, empty, and full. So in the last video, I took time to talk about the footwork because that's where we build our foundation. Separate, empty, and full is all about how we move. So are we moving in a jerky manner, falling into our footwork? Are we moving smooth, even, and continuously? Are we feeling that weight transfer through the foot evenly, finding our balance and our connection to the ground, and then transferring it back to the other foot? And just playing that kind of dance between the feet back and forth with every step that we take. This is really important to our whole practice. Now, some things come into play with this that includes our upper body shape. That's why we started with that. So if your chest is up the whole time, you're gonna have a hard time sinking that energy down to your legs to become rooted in your footwork to then distinguish empty and full. These are the things that we wanna think about as we're practicing. The slower we move, the more time we have to work on these principles of practice. Keep in mind that the young family used to practice half the speed we're practicing now. That says a lot. That really gives us more time to practice all of these essentials, all of these principles of practice. Separate, empty, and full in particular is really gonna give you that balance aspect. It's going to allow you to connect to your footwork and feel that weight transfer so that you can then get stronger by having that great alignment in the footwork and legs and then Find your balance because your gaze is level the whole time. So there's a lot of things to think about here, and I really hope that you can start kind of integrating these essentials into your practice. Okay, so the next one, synchronize upper and lower body. What does that mean? Pretty straightforward, right? Synchronizing the upper and lower halves so that everything arrives together. That's your goal. In Tai Chi, we move slowly so that we can coordinate the whole body together so then when we move fast, we have full power. It's not like Kung Fu. It's not gonna be speed and strength. It's going to be coordination of movement that gives us the most out of our whole body. So it starts in the ground, connecting and being rooted in the footwork. That energy moves through the legs. It's controlled by your waist turning and then expressed in the hands and fingers. So it's one large wave of movement moving through the whole body. One great exercise to work on this is in push. The arms have a long distance to travel. So we have to go from chest to shoulder height and we have full arm extension. But our knee's only gonna move about this much for our bow stance. So how can we make everything arrive together at the exact same time? Separating empty and full, giving that push and support between our legs, we can use that spring action so that we can slow down our footwork so that as we're pushing with our back leg, our front leg is stopping us. And then we have enough time to complete the arm so that when our knee is over the ankle, we have full arm extension. So, when you're practicing, stop at some random point. See, am I all the way in my bow stance and my legs haven't made it yet? Or are my arms fully extended and my legs aren't there? How can you check in on yourself to make sure that synchronizing upper and lower halves of our body is included in your practice? Okay, so we have one more. Practice continuously without interruption. What does that mean? Pretty straightforward too, right? We wanna make sure we're smooth, even, and continuous. Just like our breath, we never stop and hold our breath, we're always gonna let it flow. It's just always gonna be smooth, even, and continuous. So as we do this movements, we don't wanna do ward off right and then stop, and then do roll back and stop, turn and stop, press and stop. We wanna make sure that we're hitting the final posture, but then we're flowing right into the next movement, back and forth. And yes, 
in traditional Yang style, we have checkpoints. We have these great kind of points in time where we can literally check in on what our body is doing and where we should be. But we don't want to include that in our practice all the time. We want to use that as a tool to check in on our alignment, but we want to practice continuously without interruption. So we want our whole body to work together in one synchronized movement. This takes a lot of time, okay? In the beginning, we're gonna be so worried about all the things that we're doing that we might be stopping within our practice. But eventually, I want you to let go and just feel the flow. And that means that maybe you lose the end posture for a moment and you're just more floating from one movement to the next. Guess what, that's Tai Chi. We go one direction, then we go the other, and then we kind of hone it in until finally we make it our own and it just feels great and we're meeting the requirements that Master Yang is looking for of finally becoming standard. That's our goal. We want to become standard and we want it to feel natural and we want to enjoy our practice, okay? So again, this session, coordinating movement, separate empty and full, synchronize upper and lower and practice continuously without interruption. This is your mission. Can you include these three essentials in your practice over the upcoming week? And then next session, we're going to dive deep into harmonizing our mind. So how does our mind relate to our movement? And can we then bring in all aspects of our training together to create one beautiful Tai Chi practice where you're enjoying every movement and you're playing Tai Chi and you look forward to practicing every day? All right. Until next time, I'll see you soon.